Okay, so our final news story of the week, uh, interesting interview with IGN with um, ex-Xbox uh, boss Peter Moore. And um, basically he was talking about the perilous future of consoles, seemingly. You know, basically he believes that serious questions are being asked about the future of consoles at both Microsoft and Sony and just about anyone who makes consoles, I'd imagine. Um, okay, um, Oliver, I'm going to go to you first on this one. I do think it was a bit of an odd interview in many ways because you know this is coming hot on the heels of Microsoft announcing that they're all in on Gen 10 which will deliver the greatest um, generational leaping capabilities that they've ever seen apparently um, so there was some odd perspective in this this interview but at the same time there's no doubt that it is getting increasingly hard to produce cost efficient performant hardware. And at some point, it may well be the case that the end of the console is nigh. But I'm curious about what you thought about this interview. Yeah, I don't really take it that seriously because people have been speculating about console business models for a long time. And obviously, we do know that there's a Gen 10 commitment from Microsoft and almost certainly one from Sony as well. But I, I think that people like underestimate the extent to which the console business is like extensible and adaptable because like it can be games as a service oriented with like cross platform games like Fortnite that are in PC and mobile. It can be AAA centric with AAA titles that are platform exclusive like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, or it can be more like catalog titles like we see with Xbox Game Pass or PlayStation Plus Premium or um, the backwards compatible titles that are available on, on both services and especially on the Xbox side. So it can be like lots of different things. And I just think like the right. plastic box that's in your living room can support so many different business models. And the industry is always moving and evolving and doing like interesting new cross-platform things and whatnot. So I don't know. I don't really think too much of that. And then there are also like areas that console holders can go down that we haven't seen so far. Like if you look at the PS4 and Xbox One, those were more conservative machines than the 360 or PS3. Gen 10, for all we know, could be another more conservative generation. I don't think it will be, but if, if they wanted to juice profits and slim down their um, you know game proposals further, slim down their their uh, offerings further, we've already seen some of that in the, in the past few weeks. So I think you can give up some business probably to juice margins to some degree. Um, in the long term, who knows how well that works, but in the short term, I think you can probably do it if you're interested in achieving that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think it's I think it's a bit of a naysaying that doesn't really make sense in light of the console platform holders' commitments to upcoming hardware. Obviously, we know there's a new, new Nintendo console coming, and the other platform holders are probably accounted for there as well. So I think it's a, mm -hmm. a little bit of doom saying that doesn't have a whole lot of substance behind it personally. Doom saying. There is an interesting quote in here, which I am going to read out. What I'm saying, this is from Peter Moore, by the way. What I'm saying is the questions are being asked as they have been for the last 20 years. Are we ready to gird, gird our loins financially for battle and all the cost of development, silicon development? What is it that PS6 could do that PS5 can't that would make people right. jump from PS5? Or same with Xbox, same with Switch, Right. God forbid, it's just incremental. And I think that the companies are also looking at that. What can we do to extend this life cycle? And then if you're Microsoft and you're Phil Spencer, you've got Satya Nadella coming in saying, all right, what is the future here? And how does this play into the biggest strategy of cloud with Azure with AI? What are we doing with AI game development? How do you make your games faster, cheaper, and with less people? These are all questions I think are being asked. I do think they are being asked, and I think to a yeah, certain sure. extent they're being answered. Right, Alex? I mean, um, the, we're talking about Microsoft promising this biggest generational leap ever. It's not going to come from transistors. They're not going to produce a new piece of silicon that's you know, got the largest jump proportionally of transistors. It's going to be because of AI. It's going to be because of stuff like frame generation that delivers that generational leap but not necessarily through brute force hardware alone. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd agree with that sentence uh, and that sentiment um, of it's the, the the leap that will come that they will try and sell as the biggest leap ever will probably come from AI hardware and or AI enhancements to games that are not done locally um, as an on the local machine, but maybe they're streamed in or maybe they're prepackaged in some way. Uh, and I think that is perhaps compelling and perhaps going to be what Microsoft leans on and presumably Sony will too to keep up with the Joneses uh, and but the one thing that I actually do take away from Peter Moore here that I Peter Moore that's his name right I don't want to say it wrong yes it is Peter yes. Moore uh, Peter Moore is that okay but how do you sell any of this to the audience 
Um, it, well, it comes down to great games, right? And this is why I think he's saying, God forbid, it's just incremental. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it is literally just better lighting um, or you can talk to a bartender in a game who tells you about his personal life, like the NVIDIA demo, I think it really needs to be super compelling in which I would agree with it. And I also think it's perhaps also the nervousness that John references multiple times with regards to the Switch 2. Um, that, okay, so we already have the Switch and it already creates great single player or even multiplayer experiences that are directly from Nintendo themselves. Um, like, what does Switch 2 change about that? necessarily other than maybe better graphics and better performance is that enough of a selling point to move people over to it uh and like you said rich just like it needs some killer apps to make people get nervous enough and i gotta play that game i my switch doesn't um so yeah but it's also it's not like the most interesting way I would say to sell new hardware just because it doesn't have some sort of game, but if if it's offering an entirely new experience, then that I think is very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm still not sold. I think AI is a great tool, going to be a very great tool for making development faster in some aspects, but I'm still not sold on the radical gameplay innovations it may cause without being demonstrated it in a really great and fundamental way yet. I'm just, I like being conservative regarding those things just because you can overhype stuff so easily. Yeah, I think the danger is that, you know, precisely what we've seen with some of the RT upgrades that we've seen, it's, um, it is incremental in a way. It's not baked into the game as a design imperative to use these features. Yeah. It's a bit yeah. of a problem, right? Um, but then you see stuff like cyberpunk path tracing. You know, it, it is a game changer in terms of visuals, at least. Yeah. My concern is that, you know, the incremental stuff is going to happen simply because of the cost of development of games. I do think we're going to have another cross-gen situation when these new consoles come about, whether it's 2026 or 2028. And in that, in that being the case, it's, you know, they're going to be leaning into frame generation and AI-based um, uh, upscaling. Uh, basically to make better versions of the games that you can get on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, which is going to be a bit of a problem. So they're going to mm -hmm. need to produce the compelling experiences. And I honestly think that getting into, and I've said this many times, getting into closer alignment with the PC space, where all of that stuff is happening already and has been happening right. for the last year or so, a couple of years. I mean, that's basically key to it all. And that's where I'd be going if I was Microsoft and if I was Phil Spencer. And if I've got Satya Nadella coming in and saying, all right, what is the future here, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, so yes, that's uh, that's an interesting point. I think the the other thing that was interesting about the Peter Moore interview is the concept that these conversations have been happening now for the last 20 years, he says. But I don't think there was ever any doubt that there was, was going to be a successor to the Xbox uh, 360, 360 and the PlayStation 3. Um but again, it did seem to be, you know, fundamentally PC leading the way. Um, it was the move to x86 and and basically PC-like graphics architectures um, more closely than ever mm -hmm. before. That, that was a bit of a game changer there, especially for Sony. Yeah. Um, is yeah. Any more thoughts on this one, Oliver? I also just happen to think that with the way that generative AI is moving and moving very quickly in all kinds of exciting ways with LLMs, with video generation, with all kinds of very interesting and, and potentially accelerating AI developments, that if I'm a platform holder that's looking at a console and looking at interactive entertainment where AI has some interesting potential, that I'd want to say that's a potentially very high upside area of AI to, to move mm -hmm. into and, and obviously speed up development, maybe have some very, very interesting and compelling applications on the rendering side as well. I'd want to be in on that generation just because of the upside potential. And it's a lot easier to say, oh, wow, there's a cool new AI thing we can integrate into development, we can integrate into rendering, let's integrate it in our existing platform or our upcoming platform, than say, oh, you know, where someone sitting in the position of, well, we want to have a console platform now because games all of a sudden are, are a lot more interesting, right? It's much easier mm, to be there yeah. if you're already there. So I kind of tend to think that if I'm Microsoft, if I'm Satya Nadella, you know, Satya Nadella <laughs> I'm thinking about a future Xbox as a great platform to get all my Azure 
AI stuff in there and just see what happens. Yeah. That's an interesting <laughs> point because we are seeing this un yeah. unprecedented scaling of compute specifically for AI and with Microsoft at the forefront of that. Uh, in many ways, I do think that they're probably looking at this very, very closely and saying, right, what can we do with it? I think there's always going to be an issue when you're talking about offloading some AI stuff into the cloud, that there's this massive latency issue that you that you can't really overcome unless mm -hmm. you're doing it preemptively. I mean, this is the sort of situation where you just don't know what's going to happen because you know the whole thing is in a state of flux. I mean, the um, the leaps we've seen in AI tooling in the last two years, 18 months, a year even. When was your first AI video, Oliver? Because that was uh, a year and a half ago. Right, because that's where things really started to get interesting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It's like, yeah. I mean, yeah. The image stuff and then GPT-4 was released exactly a year ago today, actually. Um, or a year ago yesterday, I think. So that was like the huge LLM breakthrough that that uh, really brought LLMs to the forefront. But yeah, certainly it's mm -hmm. been a pretty wild uh, 18 months. And we've had the co-pilot stuff integrated into Windows now, which is basically, isn't that like the, the best form of chat GT, GPT? Yeah, that's GPT-4. Yeah. And it's free, and it's free, uh, essentially. Yeah, so, with Windows yeah, license. I mean, or even not. <laughs> with a Windows license, yes. <laughs> Maybe even not with a Windows license, who knows, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think you know that is basically the next frontier, right? The whole AI stuff and what it could do for games. We've seen some interesting demos. We've obviously got frame generation, which I guess that doesn't specifically need AI, but it certainly helps. And DLSS, where it has been the the kind of defining factor of what made it better, ultimately. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, sky's the limit there. I guess we just have to wait and see. The power of the yeah. cloud may yet be a thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm just curious, like, it, I think it actually does have maybe some very compelling cases for games that are multi-generational, as well as ones that thrive on social meta experiences. So in a game like Fortnite, which now, for example, has... Oh, God, I don't even want to theorize, but I think it actually for like individual single player games that are made by Naughty Dog. I can't actually look at you right now and tell you what it could mean, but I could imagine games that have much more free form uh, social experiences that AI could apply to them much more readily because they're always online already. Anyway, uh, they have cloud integrations to some degree. Content is I hate the word content, but content is a huge part of them, like adding in new stuff all the time. Play as Marvel Avengers with Nicki Minaj. Like, you know, like you can imagine ways they can plug in AI into that to make that even better, even more stuff all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? Nicki Minaj everywhere, basically. <laughs> Nicki Minaj is in every <laughs> game. <laughs> I like the way you sort of migrated her away from Call of Duty, which I think was the original. Iteration. Yeah, the, the, the original, the, the true OGs, <laughs> no, the original Nicki Minaj integration. This is the future of gaming. Oh my you, goodness. You, you heard it here first. It's it's okay. I still got my old PCs. I still got my Windows 98 <laughs> if I ever decide to tune out. Uh, so I'm good. <laughs> That went off on the tangent, didn't it? Yeah, I'm so <laughs> um, sorry. But yeah, I just, these games, these Fortnite games, man. They I are... do find it quite interesting Ooh. that uh, he was talking, Peter, going back to Peter Moore. <laughs> Peter he, Moore. He is, he is real. He's not in he's real. He's not an Warzone. AI construct. <laughs> um, they yeah. were talking about this being a thing, even up to the Xbox 360 generation. They were wondering, you know, where to go next. And, you know, I think we've talked about how the consoles that followed weren't quite as cutting edge um they were a lot more conservative they weren't on the cutting edge process nodes um they used um compromised shall we say cpu cores but they had pretty good gpus so yeah i mean where we go from here it is i think it's definitely going to be more of a kind of software slash hardware uh integration of ai features that's the next big frontier that's where all the money's going and the cloud stuff could be interesting, but there's still going to be that latency issue. Um, anything more to add to that? I mean, read the interview on IGN. It's quite interesting. But um, yes, I mean, there are going to be new consoles because, you know, Microsoft has said so.